fastest car ever made. Pretty fast. Holy fucking shit. Ooh. It's pretty quick. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Well, I think routines are important. I, I think they're also natural, right? I mean, you know, a, a big part of a routine is, um, or a routine, or maybe even a habit. Uh, there's a lot of good habits and, 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 and bad habits. I think it's important to look at your routines, your schedules, and what you're doing. Focus on them and really kind of make a list. Question: Is that what I want to be doing? Is this? Is this? And how it's affecting me? After the kids get off to school and you go through that pandemonium you have a little bit of reset and it's, it's a calm before the storm, right? So when I'm down in the gym, training, you know, silence, sometimes music on, sometimes music off, it allows me to kind of clear the head and really kind of plan out and think about through the day of what I'm going to be doing and what, uh, what I want to try and get accomplished for the day, the week, and the longer term goals as well. More often than not, walking downstairs or whether I'm meeting my trainer or going to the gym, you're not pumped and amped up going. It fucking sucks sometimes hitting in there. But I don't know a time when I've left the gym not feeling great, charged up and kind of super from there. So yeah, are you always hitting PRs and, and, and saying these big drills? No, you're not. But as long as you're there, you're showing up and putting the effort in, I think that's more than half the battle. I started this um, probably uh, eight, nine months ago. It's technically an OMAD, which is one meal a day. I will wake up, work out, then coffee. And that's it until about five o'clock. Um, I'm still getting my calories in. I'm still probably eating 3,000, 3,500 calories a day, but I'm just eating it in that feeding window of you know five to 8 p.m. Um, and then fasting again. Weekends, it's, you know, all, uh, all bets are off, right? You know, chocolate chip pancakes with the kids and bacon and breakfast and all the other things. So weekends as often. So I've got a cheat weekend as opposed to a cheat day. Besides the health benefits of intermittent fasting, which there's a lot of science on, um, it works for my schedule to keep, uh, you know, maximizing and, and packing on as much as I can throughout the day. Hey, good morning, how are you? Doing all right, just in the airport, about to catch our airport or connecting. Oh, you're already in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna work on the, uh, on the go well stuff. Bit of an obsession. Shoes and cars of, uh, uh, and watches, I guess all the vices, but I guess there's better, worse vices that you could have. Getting dressed for the day, I, I think it's definitely, um, you know, how I'm feeling and what, what my days look like as far as who I'm meeting. Um, my typical outfit is gonna be a hoodie of some sort or some color. If it's black, I'll, I'll try and keep the black themes or the, the, you know, the uh, blue leather uh, Royal Oak on. But you know, if it's you know, brown, you know, maybe it's one of the Hublots. Um, so just trying to mix it where that is some, some bit of theme. I mean, most of my stuff are, is pretty casual. It's, you know, I think this, this hoodie's from Lululemon, so not a huge, you know, uh, high-end fashion all the time, but I like to have nice shoes and nice watches. Cars are something that I just, um, I, it's a passion of mine since I was a kid. Um, and now it's cool because I kind of share that with my eight year old. He actually probably knows more about cars than I do. Um, and, you know, is trying to race and he's eight. Um, so it's something that we in, enjoy and kind of uh, can share, share together.
Appreciate All right. you. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All Cheers. right, bye. bye. As far as my style goes for, for meetings, um, it aggravates some people that are on my side, right? If we're going on to, if, if it's me going to a meeting with my team, um, I guess they don't know that I have no preconceived agenda. If it's going into a meeting um, with people on my team with another group, whether it's a consulting firm or a group we're trying to buy or invest in or collaborate with, um, a lot of my team early on, especially new people on my team, were very much you know, well, what's the plan? How do we go through and what's our strategy? What are we going to do? If they say this, do that. And I don't operate that way. It's probably why the name of the title of my book is Without a Plan. I find that they never work out exactly that way anyway. And if you practice and strategize for the way you think it's going to go, A, you'll be thrown off a bit when it doesn't go that way, then you've got to recalibrate. And B, you may leave money or something on the table, right? I can't tell you how many times we went into a deal thinking that we're going to go and do a JV and it ends up to be an acquisition target. And if we went in there to only do a JV and that's what we planned for, we may not have allowed that conversation to develop and then move over to uh, become an acquisition. Okay, give me a mic check. Check, check, check. We're on in three, two, one. Hey Shane, thanks, uh, excited to be here. Yeah, look, you know, typical day, just trying to uh, come in on a Monday, right? You know, typical morning meetings, running through. Catch